friends, welcome to another broadcast of Backflash Fridays. And what we're going to be doing today is step number two on the bridge. Oh, I have to warn people because I'm sure you just heard that. So I was told by the landlords that the roofing that's been going on the last couple of weeks, it's been driving me absolutely insane, would be done on Tuesday and Friday this morning at 730. They were banging on the uh, roof. Uh, I had an interview scheduled with HG Tutor as well this morning, which had to be rescheduled, but I'm not going to reschedule this one. So hopefully we can get through this without you guys being too irritated with the maniacs on the roof. With that out of the way, we're going to be covering, let me show you guys what's going on here and what we're going to be doing. This is quite an endeavor that we're going to attempt. So where is the channel? I have so many tabs pulled up for this freaking uh, episode. Um, okay. So what we've done, what we have is, um, let's see, add to stream. Okay. So here's the channel. And if you scroll, this is the homepage, guys, and you can always find the playlist um, here. And if you scroll down, you'll see Backflash Fridays. And I'll make a separate playlist for this for this series. It's called Scientology's Bridge to, to, to Total Amnesia, where we're going to break down the bridge from the beginning all the way to the top, called OT8 on the processing side, as well as um, the training side. And I'm going to show you the bridge shortly to decipher that madness that I just spit out. But number one is the first step on the bridge called the deadly purification rundown. The deadly isn't in there for clickbait. It has literally killed people. And it's important for people to know what they're signing up for on their purification rundown, which is also used as one of their front groups called Narconon. Number two that we're doing today is called the TRs. And we're going to take you through just the first four TRs. There's the lower training routines, which is what TR stands for. And then there's what's called the upper in dock. Indoc is short for indoctrination. And you think that would be our first clue when taking that course that we're being indoctrinated. So we're also going to demonstrate um, these to you so you can see what the fuck they look like. And we're going to show you what Scientology says they are. And then we're going to show you what they're actually doing step by step. And before we get started, I just wanted to say hello to everybody. Hi, Goldie. Thanks for showing up, my friend. Um, can always count on you to be in here. Um, Goldie is the mod extraordinaire. She always drops little treasure links as to help in the aftermath foundation, all the way to Scientology's technical dictionary. So when you listen to the live chat replay after it publishes, please look on the right hand side because Goldie always drops some amazing stuff that has to do with the stream in question. So first of all, how are you doing today, Marcus? How are you, my friend? It's been a very busy day. I understand. Same here. We had a little bit of um, drama, not just with the roof, but on, from every angle. So I feel like we're being tested to put our TRs in to get through this stream because there's lots of distractions um, going on. But we yeah, can lots of things this. going on. We sure. can do this, sir. Okay, so here is Scientology's infamous bridge to total freedom. The reason I called it the bridge to total amnesia is not to be tongue in cheek, but because it's discussed on the series. Um, everything is the opposite in Scientology. It's literally a satanic cult. And if you don't like that, <laughs> that idea, just think of reversing mm. everything. So when he says that you're going up to the bridge to total freedom, the idea is that by clearing your past traumas through your past lifetimes, you will remember who you are and you'll become an all powerful Thetan or being if the opposite happens. You forget who you are. You disconnect from your family and your life more and more. And you develop a pseudo personality that becomes stranger and stranger and stranger unbeknownst to you all the while. So that's why we're calling it that. Now, at the very bottom of this bridge, this is what it looks like, guys. At the very bottom here, and I'll zoom in, you can see all the steps here on the auditing or processing side. This is where you hold the soup cans and get false memories implanted into you in a nutshell. And if you go to the bottom here, We've already covered this one, the purification rundown. We did a really in-depth um, version of this. And like I said, we're gonna take each of these steps and we're gonna show you what Scientology says that they are and people's success stories. And then the other side about what they really are doing and people who have um, sussed the con. So you'll notice here on step two, it says TRs and objectives. Now we're not gonna cover, cover the objectives because that's too much. We can only hit the TRs today. This is now the second step on your brainwashing journey. And by the way, the purification rundown is designed to soften you up. It's sort of like a hazing ritual that you might do in college to break you down, to prepare you for the hypnotic processes of the TRs. And the TRs is the only one that's also on the training side. 
So there's two sides of the bridge. They say that each side is worth 50% of your gains. And if they were being honest, that would be losses. So the only one that's on the training side that's also on the auditing side is these TRs. And you'll be able to see it right here where it says the pro TR course and the upper in doc training routines, which I told you about earlier. Now, this is really complex. So I'm going to try to keep, keep it as simple as possible. But the basic idea here, like I said, if you want to remember who you are, according to Scientology and relieve all your trauma, including all your past lives, you work yourself up all these levels, the grades, you become clear. That's the first major milestone. And the second major milestone is OT3. These are the confidential levels starting at OT1 after you pass all their eligibility and where they get all the dirt on you on these levels. You learn how to solo audit so you can do these levels. And then it only goes up to OT8 despite people in the bubble thinking that there's going to be new OT levels released, which they're not. So by the time you get up to OT8, this one is it, over here is where it says the ability gain and it says it handles the primary reason for amnesia on the whole track again that's why i decided to name it the bridge to total amnesia because it doesn't handle amnesia you're absolutely in amnesia by the time you hit um that just ask my poor dad you know who exited this world actually believing uh that he was a massively spiritual being who remembered all of his past freaking lives so fucking sad anyways um so that's the bridge to total freedom hopefully that makes um sense to people and now we're going to show you what scientology has to say about their communication course and we're going to show you their side and then like i said we're going to demonstrate each one of these each one of these drills and show you what they're really doing so let's um check out scientology's video on this shall we let me find it here. here's a million tabs to pull up okay you ready for this marcus you're gonna fucking love this yeah, I'm going to drop a link in the uh, boring, chat. Hearted, but um, please uh, don't blame me for the production quality and the horrible music and ridiculousness that you're about to view. All right. Got your TRs in, Marcus? You ready to do this? <laughs> Communication is life. From your personal relationships to your professional connections, your ability to communicate can spell the difference between success or failure in all aspects of living. You may have noticed that the people you know who are successful generally have a high ability to communicate, and those who aren't successful you have a moment I just wanted to talk to you about something that I do. don't. Poor guy. If you look around you, you'll also see there are a lot of people who think they're communicating who are not. Some have trouble expressing themselves. This happens all the time. Can you believe that? I can't believe it. I can order. I can't tell this bitch to shut up. <laughs> By the way, me and Marcus were commenting on this before we started that this is the most downtone. That means um, sad um, like, or stimulative restaurant that like, you know we've ever woman. been to. <laughs> this woman won't shut up. <laughs> and Scientology was woke before woke became a thing because this was shot many years ago and they're they're very um, sensitive about including every um, nationality. Listen, and I have to stop every couple minutes because I don't want to get copyright just to be safe. Chicken. If I ordered salmon, no telling what they bring out, what meatballs or something. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Wow. <laughs> okay, so basically everybody's pissed off in this thing and we'll move it along here um where we oh, get into the play, actual though, it's the restaurant you want, the restaurant you want, you, you want people to see how bad this, this is like is? alice's okay. restaurant man come on <laughs> okay bro excuse me this isn't what i ordered i ordered the chicken Would you i ordered the please? chicken you Thank idiot you. anyway as I was saying, anyway i'm gonna keep talking yeah, your head off your and homeboy's gonna be like some God, people say people can't hear it goddamn this is important calm marcus cute right you're welcome Welcome. You're, you're welcome, old man, asshole. All right, mate. Others wonder why no one wants to talk to them. It's that chick's so trauma. hot, anybody would want to talk to her. That father and Terrible. son. That's wrong starting conversation. <laughs> what the fuck? So I drove to Long Beach today. Um, yeah. Never mind. That is the worst and others acting have I've ever no seen. No idea wow. how to end one. How many cars? I drove to Long Beach today <laughs> never mind <laughs> i mean i have to have them all mercedes bentley 
there was this Ferrari. Oh my God. I mean, you could hear this. This guy's the, obviously a narcissist. He'll be perfect for Scientology. Thing the truth <laughs> is, some of the biggest problems people have in everyday living you gave me the wrong day for day or day. have to do the wrong with communication day day. difficulties. Listen when I call the order. You told me to cook the fish you fillet. Listen. Yes, I absolutely read the ticket. Perhaps in homes that take you out in the back and fuck your shit Read the up. ticket, man. All right. God damn it. Read the ticket. This is because until now, no one has ever been able to tell anyone how to communicate. You see, there's a precise formula that successful communication follows. And if you know it, you can vastly improve your ability to communicate. Get the hell out of my kitchen, go now. But to begin, <laughs> it would be helpful to understand what communication is. Let's take the That's simple correct, example Elizabeth. of two people talking to each other. Right, go ahead, Here go. we go, here's the comm cycle. This is the part you've been waiting for, guys. The person making a statement is causing a communication. So at that moment, we say he's caused. Can I say something serious about this real quick, Marcus, that we were talking about, too, when we yeah. were forced to watch this before the broadcast? Yeah, so, all this shit actually makes sense, what we're about to see. Well said. And the point on that is that this is how Scientologists are introduced. We're not being hit with Xenu. We're not being hit with, you know, history of man. And we were all came from clams. This seems really fucking sensible, man. This is the kind of shit that I was introduced to as a kid. And you're not going to see any of the tricks and snags that we're going to break down as this broadcast continues. You're just what blew my mind about this is it's so simple. I was thinking nobody's ever broken down the communication formula. No one's even thought of that. I'm sure they have. But to me as a kid, I was like, wow, this is really fucking sensible. And this is practical. And I can see how this can give me control over my communication with people. So check this out, guys. Now the blue. The person receiving the statement is the effect of the communication. So at that moment, he's effect. The space between them is distance. So we could say that a very basic formula for communication is cause, all the red. distance, effect. Bill says something across a distance to Joe, who receives it. Now, to complete the communication, they need to change roles. Joe has to answer. So Joe replies. How's that, Bill? Now he is cause. He says something to Bill, who is now effect. Bill receives it and nods or says something to acknowledge that he's received it. Great. And this completes what's called a cycle of communication. Now, there are several additional factors which must be present in this formula for actual communication to occur. They include such things as attention, intention, now all the rest. and duplication. And when you study the communication formula, here's just a pause for copyright reasons. You'll find out exactly what these factors are. Then you'll be able to analyze any failure to communicate against these factors to isolate exactly what went wrong. With Scientology technology, you'll learn how to improve every aspect of your communication, including how to make your communication understood by others. Would you like to try one of our famous eggplant order and how to truly understand what they say to you it's amazing okay thank you yeah, you're welcome have a good evening and how to correct any communication failures you have with others your photo was great thanks these are vital skills for successful living the ability to communicate with ease and certainty is essential for communication is the solvent of any problem that's and a huge um catchphrase in scientology communication can be used to solve any problem Communication is the universal solvent. So this is almost the end, guys. To the degree that we can communicate, we are alive. Okay, now is obviously... It, hold on, hold on. There's please. another saying in Scientology that I would hear sometimes, and it was, the, what if you were asked, what's the lowest form of communication? A bullet to the head. A dead person, exactly. And this is the kind of humor, and there was also this kind of humor that um, you realize wasn't really humor once you get out of the cult, but he always had little phrases like that. Another one was process um, R245, wasn't it, Marcus? Where he's like... RJ45. No, no, R245, where you use a 45 to someone's head in order to get them to exteriorize. Oh. We're oh. Already Remember, we're already losing the audience. That's higher okay. up the bridge, guys. But <laughs> sorry, sorry for the uh, inside joke. Yeah, let's come back down to their some, level. Some will know what we're talking about, the... and, and maybe Alex, since he's 
up to speed on this. He can be the word clearing IC. What's up, Alex? He can be the word clearing IC to help along with the, uh, all the crazy words. We'll see. Okay, so Sometimes the next part he talks is about other things. I don't know what are you talking about. It's all funny though, dude. Um, <laughs> anyways, guys. So the next part that I'm going to show you is the again Scientology's version of what they say that you're you know supposedly doing. So if you go to their website, I don't recommend it. Um, this is what they say. So this is communication. And their slick website says that this is okay. I want to explain this real quick as the hammering and soldering. And I don't know what the fuck is going on upstairs. Hopefully you guys can't hear that too much. Anyways, there's several different versions. Now there's the professional TR course, which I showed you earlier, which is on the training side. That's an advanced course and an actual step on the bridge. But normally when you get your ruin found in Scientology and you first go there, they're going to try to send, sell you a basic course. Sometimes that can be how to handle overcome, I mean, how to handle overcoming, how to, what is it? Overcoming ups and downs, Marcus, where they yes. teach you how to get suppressive people out of your life. Yeah. Um, they have uh, things on money, basic courses that aren't bridge steps. And this success through communication course is also not an official bridge step. It's a less advanced version of the bridge step of it. And it, it, um, there's several different versions of this communication course. Just wanted to get that across. So this is what they say it's about. A week-long course, there's no way you can get through this in a week, which thoroughly teaches communication skills to train a person to guide and control communication in social or other situations. Contains 18 separate drills, each one of which deals with a different aspect of good communication. Students learn effective ways to listen, make themselves understood, get their questions answered, handle communication upsets, start and maintain a conversation, get another per person talking, and much more. This course is for anyone who wants to communicate better. These skills taught here are used by thousands to bring greater success in relationships, careers, and many other dealings with people. And as you guys noticed, um, that as cheesy as that video was that you saw, and mind you, I wouldn't have joined up watching that. That would be a clue for me now nowadays where I'd be like, oh, that's laughable. But imagine that you're just going into a Scientology place. They found your ruin, which we've broken down on the series, and they and you see a video or concepts like that where you're not being told you're being hypnotized or you're going to read lines from Alice in Wonderland or anything. You're just simply learning a communication formula. Again, that sparked a light bulb off on me as a kid. Where it was like, that's very sensible. One of the things that Hubbard seemed to do was undercut everything. And that seemed kind of brilliant to a lot of us. So the next thing to show you is the, the pack that they um, now. OK, so after you sign up for this course, what you're going to do is be given a course pack and that several different um, there's all these different bulletins references that were written by Hubbard that you're going to read throughout the studying part of it. And that will explain more to you about why you're doing this and what the drills are. And just to give you some idea, we've got high school indoctrination, eyesight and glasses, confronting, more confronting, ARC and concourse, et cetera all more gibberish that you must study on this supposedly week-long course and nah, one week okay this one says this one is every at the beginning of every course there's a reference called ksw or keeping scientology working which will definitely require an hour-long video all on its own because there's no way i can break down what that is here but that is one of the biggest spellbinding references that's hammered into you at the beginning of every course including the com course and then after you read ksw you would go on to all these different references, right? Okay, so we're getting close to actually doing some of these drills. And uh, so that's what they say it is, right? And the very first drill, let me close some of these tabs. The very first drill that we're gonna show you and, we're, and that you start with on the communication course is this one. And it's called OTTR0. And it's basically how to be there. Before we get into that, I wanna show you what they are actually doing. There's a brilliant article. All these will be linked in the description box after the video. Give me an hour or two to put all these references up that you're gonna see in this video. But if you want further information, they're definitely worth checking out. So what are the TRs actually doing? Here we go. Um, it's so hard to focus, bro, with these maniacs above me. All right. 
So this is a reference on the communication course. It's called Scientology Training Routines. And here we go. The Scientology Training Routines or TRs are done on what Scientologists call the gradient. That means step by step by step. The claim is that information should not be presented until the student is ready to understand the information. In this way, knowledge is presented in bite-sized pieces that won't cause the student or Mark to blow or leave the training session. That's a really important part in all these mystery schools slash secret societies. Mark. Patients and everyone else, the OTO or Harvard got this shit from, they always give it to you in bite-sized pieces of information, not to go on a gradient, but so you, you don't understand the bigger picture of what you're dealing with. In reality, the quote gradient is designed to place increasing levels of thought conditioning into the student. By the way, the reason I bring this up and it's so important is because I've covered in the series and there's and there's been a lot of debate as to whether or not these TRs are any good or not, because a lot of indie Scientologists, not going to name any names, Karen Daly Carrier, think that these introductory choruses and stuff are good and that these are the good part of Scientology before Hubbard went mad or Miscavige took over and fucked everything up. But this is going to show you that not only are they not good, this is the foundation fucking exercise to keep you in the hypnotic trance. And here's how they work. So in reality, the gradient is designed to place increasing levels of thought conditioning into the student. At the earliest level, OTTR0, which we're going to demonstrate shortly, nothing is asked of the student and the gradient position is zero. New concepts, controls, and conditionings are applied in increasing levels as a student gains higher levels within the Scientology system. The end effect of these exercises or processes, as Scientology refers to them, is to neutralize the student's critical faculties and render them prone to suggestion as they engage in further training or auditing. A quick FYI, I broke down and started breaking down the TRs in an episode called The Bridge to Total Amnesia Part 1. And it's two more episodes from there is Theta Trap, where I'm just re-uploading these and re-editing them, but I broke down everything you see here in an episode, upcoming episode called Theta Trap. So the TRs are a series of mind-numbing exercises. Dick Sutphin in The Battle for Your Mind, by the way, it's a great book on mind control, guys, um, discusses various mind control techniques. Again, I'm going to link this book in the description as well. It's important to read. This paper links my personal experience with the Scientology TRs to the Stufen document. Now, Hubbard said the only way you can control people is to lie to them because the second you start telling anybody anything close to the truth, you start releasing him and he gets tougher and tougher to control. That's a very important uh, phrase right there that can be applied fundamentally to the world at large. This fundamental lies of these TRs is that they are a communication course, which you just saw Scientology saying it is which is how they were presented to me when I was first entered Scientology in the 1980s. The TRs first appeared in HCOB, blah, 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 as processes, a Scientology term for thought conditioning. For example, auditing is a process. Now, the second lie is that these TRs improved your ability to communicate. Again, this is the big debate between the indie Scientologists that think something's just wrong with Miscavige and hang on to the TRs and everything else, and they don't fail to realize it's a setup to going into a trance and shutting down your critical thinking. In fact, they are an introduction to Scientology dogma, which comes part and parcel with the, quote, theory behind the routines. The result is a continuous Scientology infomercial. Rather than communicating with the real world, the terms are defined relative to Scientology. That's key because it keeps you in the Scientology bubble and the nomenclature is going in while you're in a suggestible state, which only helps you communicate with other Scientologists. This is how your world gets squeezed smaller and smaller and smaller as you only communicate after a time, certain time period with other Scientologists. In other words, the TRs are indoctrination, exactly. So the very first one that we're gonna do, um, and I'll throw up the graphics after I read this, me and Marcus will demonstrate it, is called OTTR0. OT stands for operating Thetan. A Thetan is a spiritual being, and the goal is to become an operating Thetan, meaning you'll regain all your powers and you will operate as your actual native state, which is as a powerful Thetan that can do anything with, with thought alone. So I want to say something on this too. These are also designed to confuse you because using terms all throughout Scientology, like OTTR0 gives it a certain, gives it a certain validity, confusing sound and almost scientific sounding. If you understand what I'm trying to say, that's already part of confusing you. So here's what you do. Sit with eyes closed for hours, not moving or twitching, confronting the coach. One person is the coach and one person is a student. So um, here we go. As I took these TRs at the local Scientology mission, I quickly learned that the students on course actually taught each other. 
It's a great way for the Church of Scientology to collect the $250 registration fee and reduce their staff overhead because you don't have anybody that you're paying that has to um, make sure you get through these. You just twin up. And as pointed out in the Bridge to Total Amnesia episode, there's actually a meaning behind the word twin, which we'll get into too when we break down the esoteric and black magic shit and occult shit behind Scientology, which is literally 95% of what it is. After introducing myself to another slightly confused man in his 30s, we sat in front of each other, eyes closed for the required time. I could hear him breathing, creaking in his fold-up chair, and the sound of other students sequestered in their exercises. This is my first encounter with, here we go, sensory deprivation, hypnosis, and mind control. The hypnotic techniques used in OTTR0 are sensory deprivation and stress, which produces an altered state of consciousness, which I've been rambling on and on about these videos is what the whole point of Scientology is to then implant suggestions. In the Philadelphia doctor course tapes, Hubbard says that closing your eyes puts you into a light hypnotic trance. So here, Elrond lies about training you to, quote, confront. In fact, he's putting you into a trance, a trance that is built upon the, quote, gradient, and which becomes the basis for auditing. Again, this is the very beginning setup for your entire Scientology experience, and you will be doing these TRs over and over and over again as a Scientologist to keep you in that suggestible state. Marcus, weren't you a bad boy one time, or whenever your stats weren't up, wouldn't the Steiners make you sit down and do TRs for hours on end and for some, you know? To yep. say, what did they tell you? Did they tell you they were trying to... What did they tell you that was trying to do? How was that going to fix your stats? Um, I, I don't know. Maybe Travis remembers. I remember the the worst case one was we did T O T T R zero, uh, starting at like seven or eight o'clock because mm -hmm. probably our, our GI was so bad, and there was out ethics going on. Like John was still having the hots for Iris and giving. Who Chris wouldn't? Baumgartner like crap about it and Kathy found out and whatnot. So like um we did TR O T T R zero until the sun came up. And we was tired already. I my guess is that it's simply to um you know keep you in the state where to break you down and keep you producing. Ah, uh, Travis yeah. says right here we had to oh, confront okay. the course room because that's where the stats were low. I see. That, that makes That's sense. It. Yeah. And Travis, so, by confronting the chorus room, did your stats go up or did you just feel more browbeaten <laughs> to make sure that you um, get shit on the, on the, on the groove? Cause this is, this, that's common. You have, you do your TRs all throughout your career as a Scientologist, particularly when you've been a bad boy. So back to this, um, let's see, are we on this page still? Okay. I'll finish up with this real quick and then we'll get to the demonstrations. <clears throat> So the sensory deprivation is audio as well as visual. While I cannot recall the audio, the TR <laughs> was done in a large room where other students are doing TRs as well. I heard all of the Scientology babble, which causes confusion and lowers your mind's defenses. Of course, the visual was completely cut off, creating some apprehension. I was sitting with my knees almost touching his. Violating someone's personal space as well as being violated yourself creates more stress and apprehension. So all that's going on on the very first drill that's being done on the gradient that me and Marcus are now going to demonstrate. So thankfully we can actually do these over the internet um, and do it close. We actually need to be sitting close to each other and all that stuff, but the upper end docs are gonna require just an explanation because that's where we're actually throwing each other around the room. But these should be easy enough to get through. As you can see, Marcus already has his OTTR0 out, or his TR0 out because he's banging away on the computer rather than focusing on me, ready to go, right? So this is what Incorrect. we would do. Incorrect? Please correct me. Do What's you hear my me typing? Yes, as I soon did. as, no, you don't. You, <laughs> do, you did. As Were soon you? as you, as soon as you diverted your attention and intention towards me, I stopped. <laughs> this is what I would throw Marcus into ethics. Thank God we have that on the Discord. No, you can, whenever you watch it later and you see, you'll see that I stopped immediately whenever your intention focused towards me. Marcus, you can be right and I'll be wrong. I'll accept that <laughs> service fact somewhere. You can be right. Okay. <laughs> but what we would really be doing is we would almost be touching our knees. Now, I don't know what if you guys have done these or if you can picture this, but, you know, I was twinned up with a hot chick sometimes. Sometimes, you know, younger people, you, you don't, you're not necessarily, um, it's like always... speed dating kind of, yeah, you know, you're always like, changing around. Boop, 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 boop. And so, you, so and exactly. then in between your flunks and in between your, whatever you have comm cycles, you talk to each other. Right. And, um, but you're drilling communication 
And then you have communication about the communication that you're drilling and how you're delivering your communication. And right. Uh, but it doesn't start that way. It starts with just simply being there. Exactly. That's sensible enough, right? And Juliana's commanding us to start. So yes, ma'am. Oh, no, shit. Damn, she's, she runs a hard course room here, dude. Juliana, you can be the course supervisor since we're going to be the student, the coach. Now, Marcus, do you want to... Um, You actually just made a good point. Can I riff off that for one second? You're told that you saw that you have a twin. But let's say you went in with your girlfriend and your spouse. You would both sign up for the course and you would twin. But often... You can't have the same twin. So like Marcus says, your musical chairing all around. Sometimes you do this with a supervisor. Like I said, hot chicks or whatever. That was the hardest part about doing this as a kid is just me meeting all these different people and having to do strange drills in front of them was already felt like it was toughening me up. It was making me confront. And in the real world, I got less apprehensive about meeting random strangers. So again, all this seems positive at the beginning. Now we're sitting with almost our knees touching. That's awkward alone. And then we have to sit there with our hands in our lap. And again, I'm going to reference um, Jesse Prince and Stacy Brooks have a video that they've done on this. That will be linked in the description box as well. So you can go back and watch a professional version of these. But what we do is we have our hands in our lap and we are just to close our eyes and we have to just be there comfortably. But Marcus, actually, before we jump into this, I have to um, show people the actual drill. I forgot to do that. So stand by, please. Start. No, not quite yet. I have to, I had to just show people what the hell we're actually doing. So this is what they say that OTTR0 is. And since this is on their website, I noticed they didn't put in the gibberish with the uh, OTTR0. They yeah. just called it TR0. Um, TR0, but it's actually called OTTR0. -T -T -R so very quickly, um, this is the first drill I ever did as a child around 9, 10, or 11, somewhere around there. And they didn't even tell me what the fuck I was doing. They said, son, we'd like you to read this and then go ahead and give it a shot. <laughs> Definition. Confronting is the action of being able to face someone or something without avoiding him or her. Purpose. To train. The, this drill trains you to comfortably confront another person. And again, you guys saw what they're really doing earlier. Position. You and another person are seated about three feet apart facing each other with your eyes open and they neglect to say how close you actually are. Cause as mentioned earlier, that's part of invading your personal space. And it's the very beginning of breaking down your boundaries. Boundaries. Yep. There you go. Instructions. There is no conversation. This is a silent drill. You sit and look at the person across from you and you do nothing. You must not speak, move around, giggle. You definitely can't giggle in Scientology. That's called joking and degrading. And that's very bad. Be embarrassed or become sleepy. So none of those things can happen. Comfortably confront the other person. So the patter, that's what you say, the coach, which I guess Marcus will be for this demonstration is start or that's it. The coach has two things he can say. If the student does not hold his position, slumps, goes unconscious, twitches, starts his eyes wandering, or in any way demonstrates an incorrect position, the coach can help him by saying that's it and correcting the difficulty. You also can't have your mind wander. Now, obviously they can't tell that your mind's wandering, but they trust you enough to for you when you pass it to let them know that holy shit because my big revelation was i'm not having all these thoughts i i am in another altered state of consciousness i didn't say that at the time because i didn't know that's what's happening and i felt euphoric and i felt calm inside my mind this is just meditating which there's nothing wrong with but you're seeing the crafty environment and strategy in which is this simple meditation is actually being applied so and, he then, and where mm -hmm. and where too and what bro and where like, you know, like you're, wear doing and tear? It, you're doing it. No, no, no. Where okay. as in location. Um, you're doing it in a classroom or course mm -hmm. room. Right. Uh, where it's like almost being graded, you know. Not only that, but that reference we just read, Marcus. Remember in the course room, that guy was saying he's picking up the Scientology psychobabble. Imagine if your eyes are closed and you're just hearing the sounds, the creaking of the chair. You know what I mean? Your, your attention, your yeah. attention is being fixed. And you're hearing all you're, the you Scientology are hearing, terms. Yeah, you're hearing people word clearing. You're hearing people exactly. doing other things. You're hearing people go to the clay table. You're hearing the door open yep. and shut. You're hearing the course supervisor exactly. going to each student and be like, are you understanding the material right? Or, I think you might have a misunderstood word. Can you guys start to see that if you're going into a suggestible state like this for hours on end and simply listening and hearing all these words around you on day one, that's going into your subconscious a hundred times more powerful 
than your conscious mind if you were not in such a state. This is such a key point to get across because the reason we can start to believe more and more crazy shit and we're gonna, you're gonna see in the TRs how you're already being introduced to weird psychobabble. Being in a strange environment, seeing strange things and hearing strange things become normal because your unconscious is being programmed to accept these fucking things. So the coach then says, he then says, start again and drill goes on. So when the coach wishes to make a comment, he says, that's it, straightens up to the point and then says, start, straightens up the point, whatever. So the end result, the drill is done until you are able to simply be there and comfortably confront another person. Now, again, you guys notice how vague of a win or gain that that sounds like? I mean, what the hell does that even mean, right? How would you anything. really know, Marcus? It could literally be anything. Yeah. So we sit here. And by the way, bro, did we, if you're the coach, did you then keep your eyes open and keep an eye on me? Or were, I, if I, Yeah, I if you're the coach, if you're the coach, eyes. you, uh, I mean, it's. It was always optional. I sometimes, as a coach, I would keep my eyes open. That's funny, Juliana. See. I was just had the same thought, and I asked him before seeing your comment, but that's exactly what I was thinking of. So, Marcus, you do keep your eyes open, then? Yeah, on just yeah, this drill? yeah. On the from from the therapeutic TRs reference, I believe it is uh, the coach keeps his eyes open because, as you said, it's very very limited. There, there's expanded shit in the binder materials. Mm -hmm. um that explain you know what the coach is supposed to do what the student is supposed to do these are references right. in um in the in the uh bull the, not the bulletins but the uh tech dictionary technical dictionaries. all right we don't want to freaking overwhelm people but what he's trying to oh, say I'm is saying, it gets more i'm not overwhelming anybody i don't think i feel overwhelmed is anybody in the audience feel overwhelmed please let us know <laughs> well it takes a lot to overwhelm me yeah, it is torture, Gary. I mean, I mean, that's what it felt like as a kid. But I, when I overcame it and I could be there comfortably, I was. This is how I was getting indoctrinated to Scientology, even though I still kind of hated it. I was like, mm, maybe there's something to this. So, anyways, we'll just go through this really quickly. I guess, Marcus, I'll just shut my eyes and I will try to actually do this. I hope uh, it sucks to have to do these again, bro, after all these years. But fuck it, it's for a good cause. So let me know how I do. I'll just go for a couple minutes here if I can, and you flunk me and do whatever you need to do as a coach. Okay. You have to give me a start. Don't make me coach your coaching. <laughs> We're doing OTTR zero. Start. Flunk. I just, I was just wanting I saw to say your lips it. moving. Okay, yeah, I was just going to say that the roofing is going into my subconscious <laughs> from the sound. Okay. All right, you ready? This is fucking hard. Start. I think that's good enough. I mean, this is yeah. it's going to be very unexciting if I just sit there boring. for five minutes. But that alone was actually we don't hard even to have I could feel my head shaking a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you guys get that, right? What we do then is switch around after I pass. And by the way, this could go on for hours, hours. and weeks on end. I did this fucking forever. You mm -hmm. know, you don't you don't pass every day. It's like you're going to of some sort. Like, oh, I know what I'm doing today. Fucking TRs for sure. And then Dude. whatever else. Um uh why did exactly I just get alex nervous? i mean if they she that's said a, why do i just get nervous i don't know, I know why Hannah, did that's you funny. just get nervous I'm that's curious. a perfect segue alex into <laughs> the wrong one if you're Oops. just joining us welcome there, back yeah, oh, that's no, the wrong, wrong one too again. welcome to backflash fridays if you're just joining us i still haven't even worked out the loop there we go that's properly just to get you in the proper <laughs> hypnosis mood to do these ridiculous drills Fuck. But yeah, exactly. I mean, nobody's going to know what the fuck's going on, let alone that gibberish that you just tried to add on top of that, Marcus, with um, giving people more MUs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, okay, so the next the one. TR zero, oh, eyes open. Yes, let me actually close the tabs as we go so I can keep some coordination. You can do, I'll do eyes open, you coach me. Sure, that All sounds right. good. So let me show people what the next one is. All right. So after you've done that for hours, you know, sometimes weeks on end and you have a win as they call it, and that can be anything. Like I said, they're not, they're just, it's so Scientology, so vague and they, your wins are whatever you say they are, but you have to have some cognition, some realization, something has to happen 
on these drills that makes you smile and makes you feel good. So on the next one here, excuse and me. And ideally, it has to have something to do with the Scientology. Technology, yes, the You're technology right. of Scientology right. causing That's a that cognitive. Great thing. point. Great, great point. So the next one is called, even though they don't show it on their website, because even they don't want to be too confusing to people, right? So this one's called TR0. Oh. Definition. Confronting is the action of being able to face someone or something without avoiding him or it. Purpose. The drill trains you to comfortably confront another person. Position. You and another person are seated about three feet apart, facing each other with your eyes open. I was actually about six inches apart from my coach or from my person that I did this with. They make sure that you're actually very close to the other person. Instructions. There is no conversation. This is a silent drill. You sit and look at the person across from you and you say and do nothing. You must, you, may, you must not speak, move around, giggle, be embarrassed, or become sleepy. Comfortably confront the other person. Patter. So you would say, start, Marcus, or that's it. Or actually, I'm going to be the coach, so I'm yeah. going to tell you to start, or that's it if I have anything to say uh, to correct you. Right. And again, the coach has two things to say, as we already went over. The end result is the drill is done until you are able to simply be there and comfortably confront another person. Now, guys, real quick, we're going to tell you that that Scientology's version, that's what they claim is happening. And I want to show you what is actually happening before we dive into this thing. Don't worry, it's going to get a little more exciting, especially when we get to Alice in Wonderland. But um, so here's what's really going on on these freaking things. See if I can blow this up a little bit. Okay, so this is the one we just went over. TR0 confronting. You sit with your eyes closed, eyes open for hours, not moving or twitching. Confronting coach. Can you, have you guys ever, can you even imagine trying this? I mean, just trying to, to it takes an enormous amount it's incredibly of incredibly hard. It's hard. It's hard. And wouldn't you say, bro, that by the time you actually complete <laughs> this and get through it, you feel like you really overcame something and that bonds you more to Scientology because oh, like, yeah, you, sure. know, you went through and went even through even now, years later, like just sitting and meditating, like without all of the bullshit constraints of the flunking mm -hmm. and the that's hard whatever. enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Uh, um it, it, uh, yeah, I felt like I overcame it multiple times me too I know, i'm remi i'm remembering at just as you're speaking bro so i'm gonna um flunk you for body movement and tell you to start again if you okay. talk i'm gonna start if you do any eye movement etc this so is eyes are, open right yeah but before we start marcus this is what they're really doing here real quick guys okay these were the words of my staff coach as i began this strange exercise of quote confronting a person flunk is given at tone 40. we haven't started you didn't say start Wait, I'm going to get the course soup in here. Marcus, we're not starting yet. I have to explain to people what this drill oh, is. Oh, you were reading. I thought do. you were this flunking is... me. See, that's my that's ah. my trigger response. I, I was Flunk like, for not having your TRs and then paying attention to the stream, bro. <laughs> that's valid. You see, that's totally valid in Scientology world. All right, I go. totally got that. All right. So Thank you. flunk is given at tone 40 and causes shock and confusion. This is called shock and awe. And tone 40 means the highest level intention. A, a human translation, it's a military command. A lot of st Hubbard stuff, most of it, comes from the military. So that alone startles your ass, right? So the robotic start command is given to begin the exercise. The last command for each of these drills is, that's it. Words which grew sweeter and sweeter as training progressed. Amen to that. The student has not really told the rules for this game. Again, I was doing this as a kid. They didn't even tell me what the fuck I was really doing. But rather simply gets shouted at whenever a mistake is made. This sort of stimulus response, I learned, is the hallmark of Hubbard's view of human beings, or raw meat, as new recruits are called. Mere machines with start and stop buttons. Again, this is why we cover psychopathy and sociopaths on this channel a lot because everything is coming from the perspective of a sociopath who views you and I um, as mere robots. TR0 is billed as an auditor's tool for confronting the preclear, PC, raw meat, uninitiated mark, etc. But it's more than that. It's a mind control technique that opens up the mind for programming. TR0 induces an open alpha state. It goes beta, alpha, theta, delta. Those are the various brainwave states, which we'll get into um, particularly on the next video on the series where we're breaking down the auditing and how it goes into the various states for programming. Building on OTTR0. I vividly remember one of the instructions I received while learning TR0. Don't evaluate, just accept the data. That sums up the entirety of Scientology. Yeah, right. In other words, suspend disbelief and get programmed. The long hours of staring at a fixed object caused hallucinations in me. 
as I told you guys on the series, my sister shape shifted into a lizard, um, a gnome, a ghostly figure, all sorts of shit. My freaking sister, dude, as a kid was like literally turning into all these different creatures after doing this drills for hours on end. I didn't realize at the time that this was a sign of hypnosis. The sensory deprivation is incredible. You're working hard on not flunking and having to start over. The Scientology staff coach does a good job of flunking you for no apparent reason, at least in your own normally, so normally socialized mind, creating all sorts of uncertainty and confusion. Again, as gone over in the series briefly, the confusion technique is a major way that Scientology induces hypnosis, and we'll be covering that a lot more in the future because it's a subtle way of inducing a trance, and it has nothing to do with what people think about when they hear hypnotism about swinging a watch in front of someone's face. These are all done wide awake, and it doesn't appear that you're, that's happening at all. Perhaps it was true. Thinking about what I felt and saw was causing the trouble. My cognition, spoon-fed to me by the staff, was that I should stop thinking about this situation, even though it was contrary to all my social conditioning. Can you see how you're being broken down and your boundaries are being broken down? So I stopped evaluating. I suspended disbelief. I turned off my mind. Of course, this played right into my hypnotist's hands. Reports of the thousand-yard stare common to Scientologists are a direct result of this training routine. Now you guys know where that comes from. However, the Scientologist isn't staring at you. He's staring through you. Rather than intimidating you by confront, the Scientologist is paradoxically in a non-confront. He's aware of your presence, but he's in an alpha state and he has his mind turned off. Exactly. I, that's the deeper level that it just depends, Marcus. Like I said, the, these initial ones really will just take you basically to the alpha. But when you get right, into the right, auditing, right. you're going to and deep the, hypnosis. And that's maybe. when I was falling asleep and the suggestions really went. Delta waves, theta waves. Yeah. Damn it, man. We covered that in the first interviews before the, the YouTube channel got taken down, bro, because you did a great breakdown of those various brainwave states. But we'll do that again. Yeah. So trying to talk to someone like this is like trying to teach a pig to sing. It's frustrating for you and it annoys the pig. This is what it was like. I couldn't get a, a word through to my pops, you know, when I was coming out of the cult and I was desperate and homeless and all this shit, and I just needed a little bit of help. I, he would not listen to what I was saying. He would give me some Scientology gibberish like, son, I got that. Expand your anchor points. Dad, can you wire five bucks? I'm starving. I haven't, I haven't eaten for two days. Expand your anchor points, son. This is how, this is what these drills do to people. TR zero forms the basis for nearly everything a Scientologist does, be it reading a book, talking to someone or solving a problem. So you're trained to go into a trance by the friendly folks at the org from day one, conditioned to accept suggestion while in alpha state as a normal way to learn. There's another thing called trance logic, which Scientologists are kept in. And there's a certain logic that goes along with remaining and being in that trance, which will also break down and trained to suspend disbelief by Pavlovian command. The general public are hereby advised to steer clear of this exercise. Again, you know, you indie Scientologist, what do you have to say about that? That think that the tech, you know, the good, the initial choruses are good and they're not really doing any damage. Anyways, Marcus, are you, um, are you ready to attempt this? <laughs> the human brain is a prediction machine. Yes, I am ready. Okay. So, um, so I'll be the coach, you know what you have I'm to do. I'm doing eyes right? open. All right. So what I'm going to do for this so that it, there's real confront. Please I'm going do what to... you need to do. Can you see my eyes? Yeah, that's good, dude. And obviously, by the way, as the coach, I would not be smoking. This would be a huge crime in Scientology. Okay. Um, okay, that looks good, man. So, Marcus, do you remember that you have to keep your previous OT TR0 and 2? So, no yes. thoughts, no movements or anything. That's mm -hmm. so good. I'm already scared. I'm even, you're intimidating me to even say start. Okay, here we go, bro. And, and Marcus, wouldn't we be doing this together? Like, I, I'm, I'm, it's been so long, I'm forgetting. So, would I still simply be the coach and I would not Just be doing coach. this with you? Okay, start. That's it. That's really good. By the way, Marcus, just even where I could move, just looking at you, you already started to shape shift. How did that feel? How did that feel? By the way, that was really, really scary and really good. 
I started before you had said start too. Um, I I didn't. I don't know I, when I would go back and watch. I'll see how that was blinked terrible. at all. But no, you I did can, that perfectly. Yeah, and I can do it with more intention too, which is it's scarier. I, it scares people. That was really scary, actually. And yeah, it was spooky, Jay Dice. Um, what was going on in your mind, if you don't mind me asking? That was that was um, a serious confront where you you felt like even though you weren't communicating to me and you were just staring at me, I actually felt really intimidated by looking at you. In that yeah, state of mind, you you literally went into a different mode there, bro. Yeah, I can I can still do that. Like it's, I can too. It freaks. I do it sometimes just for, accidentally or to freak people no, out. No, no, no. Yeah. I just do it because they'll be like, you know, Scientology, huh? Like, you, 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 and I'm like, yeah. You ever, you ever seen a, a real cult member? You know, they're 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 they look like this is what they look like, and I look yep. at them and they're like, what the fuck, dude? No, that's fucked up. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky, and have, enjoy the rest of your day. I appreciate your kind words, my friend. Um, yeah, that was just really impressive, and it's amazing, Marcus, how. You know doing some of these drills with alex and stuff they really do come back to you right away and it sucks but it's i can i can just jump right into that you know i've mindset. used that i've used it to my advantage whenever uh during the cancer stuff and homeless stuff and and like just to just to like get through honestly just to like be be there yeah, like, you can blink, I I believe. And I know that that's not pronounced Uma. You emailed me and gave me the pronunciation. We didn't have to not blink Uma, but I'm either, sorry. But it yeah, got to yeah. a point to where I didn't blink. Yeah. You sorry know? for mispronouncing your name, Uma. I'll relook at the email so I can pronounce it right. But yeah, we didn't have to not blink. But for a while there, they had these things called the hard TRs where they, they abandoned the policy because it wasn't working. But you did have to supposedly stare at the other person for two hours straight. This is called the hard TRs without actually blinking. Pro TRs, right? No, it was it was more than just the pro TRs, Marcus. They had a policy called hard TRs where you literally cannot blink. That's almost, I don't even know if that's possible. I think, well, Travis did pro TRs and I think that that Didn't was he say a requirement that for uh, some of them. Okay, it wasn't when I did it, but it depends on the org as to whether that they pushed the no blink or not. But they they canceled the no blinking, but it doesn't mean people didn't still practice it. And if I remember correctly, Travis, correct me if I'm wrong, Travis, but didn't you actually do it for two hours without blinking? And is that even possible to do? I wonder. So that's yeah, definitely a pass, dude, on uh, TR0. He got so, a pass. I remember him trying to get the pass. I, I remember it was very difficult for him to, to get his, his comp on the... You don't TR. remember if he had to do it with no blinking? Did you ever do the TRs no. with him? I think, yeah, me and Travis done TRs together. Yeah. Brutal. Everybody's, <laughs> okay. Uma's name is Dawn. I thought it was a, she told me how to pronounce that. Or it's okay. That, I, if you say so, because she gave me a different pronunciation, but Dawn's a heck of a lot easier to remember. Thank you. <laughs> But it can still seem as a goal. You don't have to do it without blinking to pass. But if you can, it's super good. Yeah, Alex, I don't even know if it's possible, though, bro. I don't know if anybody's been able to do two hours without blinking. I'm not sure the human body can actually do that. There yeah, you go. it That's can. Irma. It Got actually it. can. Irma. I mean, I've done oh, I've done TR0 without blinking for a long period of time. I can't say how long because it's almost like when you sit and meditate, you don't like you don't at a certain point. Time doesn't even pass that's right that's and right so what but what i did notice physiologically is that uh it's likely that the reason i can hold my eyes open so long and stare at people for so long without blinking is because my my brain my body my brain my every everything got conditioned to do that and and water is yeah someone just said that pushed it up into my eyes yep. so exactly um, right Catherine, and, did you do when you say you did you only did the hard TRs? Did that involve no blinking for two hours? Because that's what I remember those quote unquote hard TRs being. And if so, were you able to ever do it for a couple hours without blinking? I'm just very curious if anybody has any data. Okay, so Marcus, we'll move on to the next one. We're moving right along. Um, so this one is called TR1. And here we go. So let me blow this sucker up a little bit so you guys can see what we're doing. And then I'm going to show you what they're actually doing. And then we're going to do this freaking drill. Well, we're going to actually, I'm going to have to tell you. Sure. I have a bio. I need to do a bio break. And also, at, at, yeah, it's six 
or almost five here. Shit, gonna are you going to have to end off? I'm going to, yeah, we'll have to start this one next and time. of session. Um, okay. We haven't even gone an hour yet, though, bro. It's, um, well, I'm saying we can go through this, but I, I do have to weed eat. Okay. Shit, man. I wish you would have let, you, you can't hang around for another half hour so we can plow through these? Uh, no. Uh-uh. Okay. Nope. So this is going to be part one, guys. Um, we have to, I hope you, I mean, there's no other way to do it to show you like what's yeah, actually TRs. happening versus Scientology. So we'll consider this part one. We'll do TR1 and then Marcus has to roll. So we'll do part two next Friday. That's good in the fact we, we can do have... And next week we can do uh, TR1, TR2, TR2 and a half. Yep. TR3 and TR4. <laughs> We, I don't know if we'll get all the way. It, I think we can do it. If we I'm can, trying, we can. Yeah. I'm trying to keep the stream moving. But yeah, I mean, bro, you can see how long it even takes to explain this shit. I'm that's yeah. kind of impressive because we've been plowing since we started. It's impressive right. that we even got this far. But okay. So let's. Yeah. do you have time for one more then? TR1 or at least. Which the, one is this? I, uh, understands this acknowledgments. This is. Um, which one is this? Alex, word clearing. I deliver see. a communication. This is just a communi delivering a communication. Do fish swim? Do birds fly? Is that what it is? No. Well, let's let's see. Let's actually see what it is. So here we go. Delivering a communication. Purpose. De well, actually, Marcus, I can let me since you asked that question. Mm -hmm. um, let's actually bring up what it really is, so we can get the true data. So we have to. We might what actually want to end that. This uh, this is going to be linked in the description box, okay, so cool. please don't ask me to work that out now. You can that's fine. everything that's in in here is going to be in the description box within an hour or two, and they're really cool. good references, guys. So check them out if you want to know even more about these fucking things. But yeah, so let's see here. So we skipped over one, Marcus, that they didn't actually um, include in here, which this is a perfect place to end off at. Actually, I don't even think we'll get through TR1 because we don't mm -hmm. want to skip the bull baiting. That's the best part. And we want to give each one its own like, you know, we did. We don't want to. We have to take it. it. Exactly. We can only go. Literally yeah, dear as Alice. As we went today. <laughs> That's funny because of the comments earlier. Alice's restaurant. I know. The next step. The, yeah, the next, the next broadcast will actually be great. Yeah. We can really start to get into this. So this is a this is a perfect place to end off because this is really boring shit and just laying the foundation. But when we yeah. and Marcus bull bait each other, um, I actually want to discuss this with you, bro, off air before we actually do it because this can get really brutal. So we, God, we actually, yes. it's a perfect place to stop. And I do need to get the R rated and all the- uh, Great point. This stuff is not intended for whatever, like, you know, uh, what, what it is. That's another great point to talk about before we end off. Before Guys, we... I don't know if it's just random people reporting me or whatever, but the channel is definitely under attack. Um, I've had it taken down once and that's understandable because there was some copyrighted material up there. It was edited. I felt it was fair use, but fair enough that they took the channel down that had 55,000 fucking subscribers and took three years to build up. But who gives a shit? It's not about the numbers. It's about the information. So as long as I can keep this channel up, which I violated absolutely nothing, but YouTube sent me a, um, a couple of emails the other day saying that someone reported that I'm <laughs> want to commit self harm. And that they removed a video from my old account that was shut down. It was the most bizarre couple of emails from YouTube that made no sense. And that shows me that either OSA or some random asshole that just doesn't like the channel or the information we're presenting and is reporting. So that's why I'm being real careful on the copyright shit that we do. I'm not, I'm trying to give Scientology no excuse or reason or anybody that they can't report this channel. And, you know, we don't even have many eyes on this or subscribers. So the fact that it's already getting attacked, just starting over is really good news because it shows you that you're actually over the target and talking about stuff that uh, they'd rather you not do, which is the whole Yeah, and the more of us that do it, all the different channels and stuff, it's, it's, it's like cover fire for uh, exactly for everybody. And uh, we can Yeah, go work. pick on the other channels, though. Leave mine alone. I'm just trying to build it again, working my ass off, re-uploading, re a, the videos. I think everyone is in some way getting picked on. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm I wouldn't be surprised at all. So we're going to, before we even get, that's the perfect place to end it off. I don't want to take it any further because the bull baiting is a whole um, another thing. But Marcus, sure. do you mind taking um, any quick questions or any comments that people have? Uh, yeah, I mean, if anyone has any questions for me, that people have been commenting on my hair the whole time. Uh, Your hair looks bitching, by the way. That's what they've been saying. I, or, I didn't even, I haven't been able to pay, been pay attention in, to the I've chat. I've been walking. I've been, you know. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, so leave me alone. I'm not. D. 
doing anything. You look great, dude. And that's from a totally 100% heterosexual male. But if I was a female, I would definitely be attracted to you. Anna, you know what? They also nailed mm. me for that Jeffrey Epstein uh, video. The channel was taken down January 2023. And then the Google account that went along with it was deleted because I never, um, it got demonetized and I never collected a dime off the ads anyways. I only had the ads up to possibly help the promotion. But once I realized it didn't help, I, I stopped monetizing the channel anyways, because I don't want ads to run for people. I don't want them to be hypnotized mm. by the stupid commercials and shit. But um, one of their warnings was they took down the self-harm they claimed was from the Epstein shadow, which you can find on my BitChute channel. I highly recommend checking it out because I think that's the kind of stuff that we touch upon on the channel that they would rather, you know, just shut the fuck up. Not so much the Scientology stuff. But if, if you guys want to see the emails, I'll show them to you because they were really fucking bizarre. Anyways, um, why would I be making Alice jealous? Je Alice jealous of what? He's not jealous of anything. That hat's pretty cool. 100% my ass. I wish I, I couldn't follow the comments today, guys. Because I, I mean, I got busy. I did pretty good until the, the last five, 10 minutes and things started going. Burrup. But you yeah, get twice I do, as much uh, mail. Is that true, Catherine? Do you get twice as much mail? And you get you get more phone calls since you subscribe to certain channels and stuff. You notice that Scientology is interesting. I'm not surprised at all. CF. They got they yes. keep every single file, even if you did. That's true. Even if you did, because you might come back. Oh, and then God. they'll have your address still. Your old hey, address. Hi, Ty. You have to Raises update your ships. address with the new body, you know. Well said, Alex. That's a perfect uh, point to end off guys sorry that we you know i mean that was an hour i, I would first like to go longer uh, maybe i can squeeze in um maybe i can con marcus or use my trs to get him to agree to maybe do an hour and a half next time sometimes he can go over sometimes he can't but i really appreciate you that wouldn't it goes by so quick though marcus it'd be nice if we can schedule a time where we can we can go over if need be i but, try so. not to sit on my ass as as, as much as i can uh it's bad for the blood, but I, I still do. Okay. I still do sit plenty, of, you know, doing what I do. But um, yeah, I try to. I try to get up and move around and walk and like another so an, an extra hour. You know, sitting in the chair for two hours in here. You know, this chair has been with me since God. That I don't chair know. looks so comfortable. You could melt. By the way, it looks like. I mean, you could melt you, into that for hours. It looks like the chair out of the Matrix. By the way, you literally look like Lawrence Fishburne sitting huh. across from Neo, dude, about ready to give him the pill. <laughs> Anyways, that, guys, join us next time. Like that chair. <laughs> We're gonna. It looks exactly like that chair, guys. Tell me in the comments if that doesn't look like the freaking chair from the Matrix that Lawrence Fishburne is sitting on. Until next time, guys. Take. Oh, that was that. Oh, was that was great. Did you like that? Yeah. I'm going to give you guys Almost the real outro, it. but I'm going to uh, talk with Marcus off air uh, to see if we can't possibly squeeze an hour and a half out of him next time, because we, it's going to get very funny when we get to the bull baiting, dude. We have to be gentle yes. with each other because that can get very stimulative. Enjoy the uh, upcoming weekend, my friends. And thank you very much for joining us.